After a hopeful drop in July, homicides in Chicago are on the rise again. So far this month, the number of murders in the city has exceeded all of the month of August last year. In addition to the Chicago Police Department's major anti-gang initiative, the city will soon use the services of the anti-violence group Ceasefire. Ceasefire employs ex-offenders to defuse conflicts in high-violence communities before they turn bloody. The group was the subject of the acclaimed documentary, The Interrupters. Here from that film is a clip in which a member of Ceasefire tries to stop the violence. All of it is stupid. Two o'clock in the afternoon when these babies coming home from school, y'all shoot. For real? This is unacceptable for me to be holding this boy, this young man's obituary. Schools, churches, your mama's house, your cars, those are safe zones. With us tonight is the director of Ceasefire, Tio Hardiman. Tio, welcome back to Chicago tonight. Yeah, I'm glad to be here. There has been a delay in getting Ceasefire on board with uh, working with the city. It uh, was about a month uh, delayed. First of all, tell us how the program is going to work. Yeah, we plan to hire uh, 12 violence interrupters to work in the 3rd District, which is the Woodlawn area, and the 10th District in the North Lawndale community, 12 workers to work there, violence interrupters and outreach workers. And then everything is working out pretty good right now. You know, we've overcome a few hurdles, but now we are one. I just want to make that clear. The City of Chicago, Chicago Department of Public Health, and CPD, we are one. One of those major hurdles was yeah. that your organization did not want these interrupters to be so-called informants for the Chicago Police Department. What did you mean by that? No, mainly I, I watched an interview with Superintendent McCarthy last week, and uh, I'm, I appreciate the superintendent making it clear that ceasefire staff would not serve as informants. The reason why is because our staff work on the streets with a lot of high-risk individuals, and we would lose our credibility, and we would lose the power to effectively mediate conflicts on the front end if people think that we're going to inform. All right. Uh, it's still not clear, though, how this is going to operate. It, it's going to be overseen by the Chicago Department of Health, not the yes. Chicago Police Department, exactly. right? So how will you coordinate things, or how will you work in tandem either with the Chicago Department of Health, the city, the police department, in order to help reduce the crime in these high violence areas. Yeah, the ceasefire program managers will uh, attend weekly meetings with the police, the uh, commanders in those two districts. And, and keep in mind, we already, we're already we working in 18 communities throughout Chicago already with state funding. So ceasefire right now, the ceasefire zones, 12 of the 18 communities are currently experiencing reductions in violence in those areas. But we will meet with the police department. Uh, people need to understand that we all have to strategize together. Homicides are up by 27% right now. In order to get the homicides back down, we, we all have to show some unity here. All right, so you'll be meeting with uh, p uh, police officials. Right. What will take place in these meetings that will help coordinate efforts on both sides to help reduce the violence? Well, this is what happens. Ceasefire, we go in, we find out what's going on and try to stop it on the front end before anybody gets shot. And uh, some of them hot areas where the police have to have more officers out there to saturate areas to avoid uh, you know, further acts of violence from taking place. So we'll strategize. We'll, we'll identify the areas that we need to pay, pay close attention to, and we'll put all of our resources there. Now explain to folks how it works. You have these individuals, they're ex-offenders, they mostly come from these communities, uh, so they know the communities well. How do you get to these situations fast enough? How do you learn about them? And how do you get to them fast enough to prevent the bullets from flying? Now, first and foremost, the, our staff are not just ex-offenders. They're professionally trained staff, violence interrupters and outreach workers, and we work in the field of uh, behavioral change, a public health model. But we get phone calls from grandmothers, teachers, counselors, parents all the time and we also get calls from the police department look it's going on over here you, ne you guys need to get over there and stop this right now so we, we uh, show up on the scene we find out what happened and we work with both sides some conflicts may take a week to resolve some of them you can resolve in a couple of hours and we uh, just recently stopped a, 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 a situation where some guys were trying to kill four uh, young men who were the grandsons of a particular lady and uh, we stopped that on the front end and the grandmother is willing to give a testimonial about that. Now you're getting a one million dollar grant from the city right. and we should note that that's not coming out of the city budget okay. is that right? No. That, where, where is that grant money coming from? Well the grant, the grant is going to be administered through the Chicago Department of Public Health and uh, I think they worked it out with the mayor in the city I mean the mayor and the, the Chicago Department of Public Health. 
And you said 12 uh, individuals that you're going to hire. Yes. Originally, the city wanted 40. Is that right? Well, no. Originally, what happened, we were all trying to rush to get things done, so we had to scale back on the numbers because these are salaried employees. They work at the UIC School of Public Health. All of our staff, they have benefits, so we can only uh, hire 12 in each community. But we're going to do some real good work there, and I'm happy to say that I, I want to thank the mayor, Superintendent McCarthy, and the governor for support, you know, the efforts of ceasefire. Weren't you going to hire even more than that, not quite 40, but around in the mid-20s, 25, 26? Well, now we're going to hire 24, like say 12 in each community, and the plan was to hire more, but you know, that's how the money, pretty much how the budget was uh, you know, written out. And you feel that these 24 individuals, or the addition of 24 on your staff, yes. will make an impact on this escalating uh, murder, the homicide rate in Chicago? Yeah, without a doubt, because our staff, we don't work traditional hours. Our staff are out on the streets from 2 to 10 and from 4 to midnight, and then we have interrupters out there all, all the way to 2 o'clock in the morning in some cases. So we're going to detect most of the conflicts in those areas and get on the front end. And we're going to organize peace summits, focus groups. Uh, we're going to spend a lot of quality time with these individuals. Uh, as a matter of fact, in 2011, we spent 48,000 hours with over 1,000 high-risk individuals here in Chicago. Are there any metrics, any measurements that the city is asking from you or requiring from you to show that you are effective and that this grant money is being well spent on your organization? Yeah, without a doubt. Ceasefire, uh, we, like I say, we're housed out of the UIC School of Public Health and we uh, monitor and track all of our work and then we'll meet with the police department with a ComStat system and make sure that we're showing results in, a, in the communities in which we work in. And uh, you referenced the, the interview with uh, Superintendent McCarthy who was on this program one week ago tonight. And originally he had said he had had apprehensions about uh, your organization saying that uh, it, it's only going to lead to people not talking to the police. Do you, how do you counter that? Do you well, think that people in these high violence areas will still uh, interact or will interact more with the police? Well, ceasefire has never informed residents not to talk to the police. That's up to the residents. What we do is we go in and we stop it on the front end. And like I say, we are one. I'm just happy to announce that we're all going to work together. And hopefully by the end of 2012, we'll see a big reduction in shootings and homicides here in the city of Chicago. And I'm sure we'll have you back to get right. an update on how things are progressing. Tio Hardiman, thank you for being here today. Thank you. And you can visit our website to share your views on the city's partnership with Ceasefire. Just go to our homepage and click on the story where you can also view a timeline of Ceasefire's evolution as an organization.